Remember, you do not have sensible teeth. You have sensitive teeth, just like me. And I guess, just as our detective duo Sherlock Bogart, they just know too much about sweets. I think it is highly likely that those two snack a little biscuit here and a little cookie there. Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Let's find out. Sherbert. Sorbet. Zucchini. Courgette. Cookie. Biscuit. Eggplant, aubergine. Sausage, banger. Starter, appetizer. Cup of tea, cuppa. Pickle, gherkin. Baked potato, jacket potato. Dessert. Afters. Ich serviere jetzt das Dessert der heutigen Grammatik. Ein paar nützliche Tipps zu den If-Sätzen. In If-Sätzen können auch unsere alten Bekannten die Auxiliaries vorkommen. Die stehen dann im Hauptsatz an der Stelle des Will bei Typ 1 und anstelle des Would bei den anderen beiden Typen. Ein Beispiel. If I had invited you yesterday, I may have talked in my sleep. Und jetzt noch ein Merksatz. Der If-Satz ist würdelos. Im guten deutschen Konjunktivsatz verwendet man möglichst kein Würde. Wenn er doch käme und nicht, wenn er doch kommen würde. Also, wenn er doch käme und mich nähme. Ähm, Entschuldigung, das jetzt nur so ein kleines Beispiel dafür. Ähm, Im Englischen bedeutet das, in äh, den If-Teil des Satzes gehört kein Shall oder Will, kein Would oder Should. Das war unser grammatikalisches Dessert. Wir schauen mal, bei welchem Gang Eric und seine Gäste sind. So Eric, what was your favorite part of Boston? Favorite part of Boston? Man. Jeff, I'll tell you what, that's, that's really difficult to answer. Boston was so amazing and so old and mm -hmm. full of history. Uh -huh. My Uncle Mike, here I got a picture of him. Such a nice guy. I haven't seen him in years. Uh -huh. He always tried to make it feel like I was at home. Mm -hmm. Here's Boston. Boston. Beautiful. It's the second largest skyline nice. in America. Here. Pick <laughs> the lobster in the picture. Which one is the lobster? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Excuse me on that. Ignore the potato nose there, okay? Okay, unless someone wants thirds, I would clean the table and bring the dessert. Yeah? Yes, no. I can't Anybody? Okay. Okay, let's clear okay. the table then. <sighs> cool. <laughs> Julia, ganz die perfekte Gastgeberin, erfreut die Gäste mit diesem Satz. Unless someone wants thirds, I will clean the table. 
unless steht für wenn nicht, soweit nicht, sofern nicht. Ist also eine andere Formulierung für if not. Für das if, also wenn, können ebenfalls andere Wörter verwendet werden. Das ist im Deutschen ja auch so. Wenn kann auch durch falls, vorausgesetzt das oder angenommen das ersetzt werden. Auf Englisch wäre das dann zum Beispiel in case, provided oder supposing that. Und es gelten die gleichen Regeln. Wie immer finden Sie dies und noch mehr im Internet und im Begleitbuch. Are you finished, Carolyn? Ja. Well, why don't you come over here so you can keep me company? Na klar, mache ich das, Eric. Ich komme zu dir. <lacht> Sag mal, kann ich zur Feier des Tages nicht vielleicht auch mal was anmoderieren? Well, I guess since it is our last show, of course. <lacht> Ja, leider kann ich jetzt hier nichts ankringeln, aber ich versuche mich trotzdem mit einer Erklärung. Hier haben wir die australische Flagge. Diese Sterne hier stehen für ein Sternbild, und zwar für das Kreuz des Südens. Es symbolisiert die geografische Lage Australiens. Und dorthin, in die südliche Hemisphäre, begeben wir uns heute wieder in unserer Rubrik Into the English World. Dieses Mal sogar unter Wasser. Australia, the continent of a thousand faces. Among its most impressive natural beauties is without doubt the Great Barrier Reef. The largest coral reef on Earth was declared a World Nature Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1981. It stretches over 2,300 kilometers along the coast of Australia. Its total area is about the size of Germany. Even from outer space, this masterpiece of nature is easy to recognize. Up to two million tourists visit the reef every year, a paradise most of all for divers. From here, it goes directly into the underwater world. The reef's multifarious forms and colors are impressive, and its inhabitants show themselves off to their best. Don't worry. The shark is harmless to people. An encounter with him on the Great Barrier Reef isn't unusual. Around 1,500 different sorts of fish are at home at the largest reef on the planet. Virtually nowhere else will you find such variety. This enormous underwater edifice is made up of over 400 different kinds of coral and provides a home for countless millions of creatures. At the same time, the Great Barrier's complex ecosystem is highly sensitive. What effect worldwide climate change will have on the grandiose reef is still not known. Protecting this magnificent underwater bulwark counts as one of the greatest challenges of the future. Apropos challenge for the future. Ich kenne da jemanden, der hat noch eine große Herausforderung vor sich. Unser Bayer in Boston. Ja, yeah. so please, Bavarian in Boston, don't try to understand everything. Oh, she just lost her job. She got sacked, and now she's at the unemployment office, standing in line. If I understood you correctly, she is standing in line at the unemployment office and wants to join a sect? No. She got sacked, not wants to join a sect. Sect heißt Sekte. Eh, eh, Sekt. Sacked heißt gefeuert. Ah, ah, sacked. I really hope our Bavarian is not going to join a sect now that he is sacked. Oh nein, meinst du, wir müssen uns Sorgen machen? Mm, nah, I don't think so, but we'll talk about that while our viewers watch the last language zone. You are now entering the language zone. I, I, I love you.
to uh honey i i gotta go we're on we're on yeah i know i'm, I'm filming okay bye bye <clears throat> excuse me roots the saga of an american family became a sensation immediately after its publication in 1976. Roots appealed to readers of every background. For African-American readers, the story inspired pride and a greater understanding of the past. And for readers of other customs, it was a powerful look into an American family's past. Alex Haley's story is amazing. He put so much effort in finding his past his ancestors, and his pride. We've now come to the conclusion of Eric's American journey. He and his girlfriend, Julia, invite friends over for dinner so Eric could tell them about his journey in the United States. During the conversation, we learned everything we needed to know about the if conditional sentences. For example, if all of my guests arrive on time, I will not have everything prepared. And since this was the final episode of Groom Course English, we had a real treat for Into the English World. We visited the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. It is a World Heritage Site for a good reason. The cowboy came to his last rescue by explaining that the German word Sensible has nothing to do with the word sensible. And to never call your boss chef. Bogart and Sherlock made us hungry by telling the difference between foods like cookie, biscuit. It is a shame we will see no more of our Bavarian buddy. I think we have learned a thing or two from him today, like the difference between sack and sacked. That was it. It's over. Carolyn, thank you so much for your wonderful grammar explanations. Thank you, dear, for the Grundkurs English. And we want to thank you for being a wonderful audience. Take care, good luck, and auf Wiedersehen. Wiedersehen.